Okay, let's talk about task math. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're preparing for the task test. And essentially the task is an alternative to taking the GED and it's offered in the, those states that um, uh, obviously offer the task. There's another test out there called the high set. So you have the GED, the high set, and the task. The task and the high set are offered in uh, specific states, but sometimes uh, those states that use the task, I know, uh, I believe New York is one of them. Sometimes they do give you the choice to take the GED or I'm not sure actually if uh, New York uh, only offers the task. But either way, uh, the task, the high set, and the GED are effectively uh, pretty much the same. They're going to be testing you on high school level mathematics in terms of um, algebra and geometry. So you're going to have to really know your stuff uh, in order to uh, pass these uh, uh, tests. So we're obviously going to be focusing in on the task and but just by virtue of you um, checking this video out you're clearly taking um, you know your uh, studies you know preparing for the task seriously as you should because you don't want to underestimate um, the math or the cha uh, how challenging the task is okay uh, these tests uh, unlike you know, the task again, the high set are pretty new relative to the, G to the GED exam. The GED has been around for like 70 years or so, maybe even longer. But um, back way back in the day, you know, the GED, if you took the GED, people may not, you know, they kind of like, uh, they didn't give it as much respect, whether that was right or wrong. But if you can get, you pass uh, the task, the high set of the GED these days, you're truly, you know, uh, th those are respectable achievements because you can, um, and not to say that passing the GED years ago wasn't uh, respectable either. It's just that the standards have changed. Really, uh, I kind of like to think of them as being more kind of college prep. Okay, so you're not uh, going to just kind of women sit down and pass the task without, at least the math section, without really, you know, doing some um uh, review and study. So that's what we're going to do in this uh, particular problem. We're just going to take a look at a real, real basic uh, fractions problem. Uh, and if you're fully prepared for the task, this thing should be super easy. Okay, but you'd be surprised. Um, you might even be surprised yourself. Now, the thing is, surprise yourself whether you can do this problem or not. <laughs> Don't cheat is what I'm trying to say. Don't pause the video. Go look up how to do this problem. Don't get your calculator out. Just kind of see what you remember about fractions. Super, super basic problem. So most of you out there should be able to just blow this problem away. Okay, but we'll get into the problem here in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years have constructed many online math classes to include a task math prep course. Now, I've had many, many people go through that course successfully, extremely comprehensive. So if you think you like my teaching style, look for a great a way to prepare for the task math. Uh, my course is, you know, uh, top notch. So again, I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. Now, let's go ahead and check out this problem. So I'm dealing with fractions, okay, real basic stuff, okay, stuff that hopefully you remember back in elementary, middle school days, but um, most people struggle with fractions and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, people get dependent upon using their calculators and whatnot uh, and in general pe most students don't like fractions okay I'm pretty sure I didn't like them because uh, they're just kind of cumbersome to work with them but they're extremely important in mathematics and you've got to know them if you uh, you know expect to to be fully ready for the task and be able to handle a lot of problems now this this is a basic um, uh, you know, fraction problem involving numbers, but uh, at high school level math, you can have fractions that involve variables, things like say 2x over y minus z over w, okay? So the way we approach a problem like this in terms of conceptually how to manage it, how to simplify it, or following the same rules, of working with fractions that have numbers, okay? So before you can handle a problem like this, you gotta be able to handle a problem like this. So you gotta know, you know, algebra, if you will, it's nothing more than doing arithmetic with variables, okay? So anyways, I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. So let's get to this problem. And uh, if you know how to do it, I would suggest just go and pause the video, take a piece of paper, uh, pencil out, pen or whatnot, and knock it out real quick. 
Uh, now, for those of you who don't know how to do this or, or kind of struggling, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. Okay, so if you don't want to hear the hint, go ahead and pause the video. If you want to hear the hint, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you it now. All right, so what you want to do uh, is you want to change this fraction. This is what we call a mixed number. So you want to turn this into an improper fraction, in other words, where it just has a, a numerator and a denominator. And then you're going to do something with this here, okay? You're going to flip it, okay? You're going to, you're going to find the reciprocal of it, okay? And then you're going to be able to go ahead and answer this problem. So kind of speaking in generalities, because I don't want to give uh, the answer away just quite yet, just trying to give you enough information to try to, you know, refresh your memory if you think that's what you need, okay? All right, so let's get to it. Let's solve this problem. Real easy stuff. Uh, so three and one fourth, okay? Again, this is a mixed number. Anytime you have a number like a three and then like a little fraction off to the side, we call that a mixed number. If I have a fraction like say one third where the denominator is bigger than the numerator, this is called a proper fraction. If I have a number like five halves, this is called an improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So you want to be familiar with, uh, you know, just nomenclature of fractures and uh, fractions. So mixed number, proper fraction, and improper fraction. So we're going to take this mixed number and we're going to turn it into uh, an improper fraction. So the way we do that is going to take four. Here, let's do it over here to the side, three and one fourth. You're going to take this 4, multiply it by 3. That is, of course, 4 times 3 is 12. And then we're going to add this 1. Okay, so this would be 13 over 4. So that's just one basic fraction skill that you need to be able to do is how to take a, a mixed number and write it as an improper fraction. So that's how you that's how you do it. I'm sure all of you out there remember uh, the basics of this. So we have 13 fourths divided by 2. All right, so that's where the problem is right now. Now, when you're dividing fractions, what you have to do is the number to the right of the division symbol, the division operator, this number here, this of course is two, we have to flip it upside down because we don't technically do division problems. Um, well, of course we have, we're doing a division problem here, but the way we're gonna actually calculate this is we're gonna take a division problem and we're gonna turn it into a multiplication problem. And the way we do that is by uh, doing this step that I'm describing to you now. So you, you locate you here the, the division operator. You take this number to the right of the division operator. In this case, it's 2, and you're going to flip it. So uh, you're going to flip the fraction. So for example, if I have 5 halves and I wanted to, to flip that fraction, okay, meaning find the reciprocal, you just you write... Uh, you exchange where the, the, the numerator and denominator, you're just gonna flip them uh, on opposite sides. So this would be two fifths, one third, for example, would be three over one. Now two, you're like, well, how do I flip that? Well, any number like two or five or 10 that doesn't appear to be a fraction, you can always write it as a fraction as being over one. So two divided by one is obviously two. So now, when I flip that, I'm going to have 13 over 4. I'm going to flip this number, okay? So that's going to be 1 halves. And what happens is, instead of it becoming a division problem, you turn it into a multiplication problem, okay? So you flip the number to the right of the division symbol, and, and now you change the operation to multiplication, okay? All right, so, so far, if you understand, that's excellent. And now let's go ahead and wrap this up, okay? So how do we multiply fractions is the next <laughs> deal, right? Because now I just exchanged a division problem for a multiplication problem, all right? They're equivalent problems, but now how do I deal with this? Well, it's really super easy. Here, when we're multiplying fractions, we just multiply the numerators, that's these top numbers, and we're going to multiply the denominators. So our answer is going to be 13 times 1, of course, is 13, and then four times two is eight. And there is our answer. Now here you can, this is an improper fraction. You can write it as a, a mixed number. Um, I would suggest do not do that. Okay, you're less, you're asked to or 
your answers, you know, what you're looking for are all written as mixed numbers. Um, and one thing you need to do for sure is always reduce and simplify your final fractions, okay? But again, this should be an easy problem if you remember how to do fractions. <laughs> now, let's say you've kind of forgot, but you're like, oh yeah, now I remember how to do that. That's, you know, that's not, that's good and bad because you don't want to make it out like, oh yeah, you could have done this problem, you know, unless this is fresh in your memory, okay, and you can actually apply these skills, then it's not just good enough to go in and be familiar with math concepts, I guess is what I'm trying to say for the task. So you're going to have to really, you know, do a lot of work to be fully ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I'm going to give you some kind of uh, motivational uh, advice, okay? Uh, before I do that, let me again, let me go ahead and remind you that uh, I'm going to leave the link to my task math prep course in the description of this video. Uh, super comprehensive. It's going to really, really help you out. So what do I like, what I like to say to those of you out there taking these type of tests, TASC, HISAT, GED, oftentimes uh, you're taking these exams after being away from school five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 30 plus years. I've seen it all, okay? What you have to do to be successful, okay, is one, uh, take this exam seriously in terms of the math, you know, uh, preparation, okay? Uh, years ago, uh, you know, the GED kind of had the stereotype of being easy. Oh, you can kind of just study real quick, da, 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 da. Not the case with these exams. You're truly going to have to know this material. So that's the first piece of advice I want to give you. The second is um, if you didn't do well in math, okay, even if you did well, just way back in your high school years and whatnot, forget that person. Let's just, obviously something uh didn't uh, fell off the tracks in your education or you wouldn't be taking uh, this uh, test, okay? So you're getting back to taking care of, of resolving that, having closure, getting your education solid so you can open up future opportunities for you. So that's excellent, okay? But probably more often than not, and I would say this is the case for 80, 90% of the people who take these exams, is they have a negative association with math uh, or they're intimidated by it uh, or they have a self-belief that they're terrible at math. I see this all the time. It's probably the most common thing. So here you are. Let's say it's been 20 years or plus, okay, since you've been in a math class, okay? And all you can, you can't remember the math. You can't remember anything about it. All you have in your brain is that you were like bad at math, okay? That you hated math. You were bad at math. Uh, you know, you have this self-image, okay? You have, this is the number one barrier uh, for you, uh, in front of you, um, that you have to resolve in order to be successful in math. Take away, you got to take away that image and give yourself a fresh start because who you were 20 years ago is not who you are today. You're a different person, okay? Back in those days, you were probably distracted, not motivated, Whatever the case is, maybe you had a bad teacher, maybe you had, a, a, you're, obviously something wasn't going right. But today, just by virtue of you studying, this is this is you wanting to do something for yourself. You're a completely different person, okay? Uh, and you're an adult in terms of, hey, you're motivated, you're, you're more mature. And I'll tell you, these are the qualities that if you have them, you're going to be able to do well in math. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you have the discipline and the commitment to build your math skills up, okay? So don't reference your current capability or potential based upon this scenario way back then. Just just to have, make peace with it. You can be like, hey, that was that was then. <laughs> don't think about it, you know, uh, you know, you know, decades and decades ago, I was a teenager. Am I that same? Yeah, I'm physically the same person. But do I think like that person? No. Okay. Clearly, you're more mature, you're uh, uh, intelligent, etc. Okay. So for 99.9999% of you out there uh, that are motivated, you can pass these exams. Okay. Now, some of you are going to have to work harder than others, but you're going to have to put the work in. And it's going to be worth it because not only you're going to be able to pass um, these exams, you're going to have a solid math education to build upon. Okay, so do the right thing. 
uh, and don't try to mm, just do the minimum to uh, pass because here's what happens when you try to do the minimum. All right here is, let's say this is pass and this is fail. I see this all the time. And here is the minimum score. Okay. So what a lot of people do, they're like in a rush and are like, I got to quickly get my task. I got to get my high school uh, equivalency, you know, da, 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 da. So I'm just going to just barely kind of like, I'm going to do, and it's human nature. I understand it, but I'm just going to do uh, what I need just to get over that, that passing line, that finish line to pass. Okay. So that's kind of their mindset. And that's the strategy. Here's what happens like 90% of the time or more to to those individuals that have this, I'm going to do the bare minimum. You know where they 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 score right here. <laughs> they're like they're like top. They were like right really close to passing, but they haven't passed. Okay, they're like oh, and it's frustrating, and that just causes more problems. Okay, so you're scoring right like I'm doing well, I'm doing well, uh, but I haven't passed. Okay, because your mindset is that you just want to get here. All right, it's that old thing like if you want to. Shoot for the, uh, if you shoot for the stars, you know, here's the stars. If you shoot for the stars, hey, you may not get the star, but you'll hit the moon. Okay. You got to, you got to set your goals to not only pass, but to excel. All right. If you, that's your attitude, guess what? You're definitely going to fall into the passing range. So a lot of this stuff is your mindset and your commitment, um, et cetera, and getting with the good program. So hopefully, uh, you know, videos like mine or my course like mine could, you know, would be the right kind of, uh, uh, match that you need so you can kind of really dig in and get going with the stuff. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best uh, on the task. Again, you can definitely uh, pass it, but you're going to have to work hard uh, to uh, earn that achievement of what you can do. I wish you all the best and have a great day.